if you hate your menstrual cycle, if you disregard it, if you just shove a tampon up there and get along with your day, like, of course, you're going to be experiencing pain. Of course, you're going to be experiencing discomfort. Of course, you're going to be experiencing uh, challenges around your menstrual cycle, because on a deep fundamental level, your body, which has to have these processes, just like urination, just like going to the bathroom, um, all these things, if your body feels that you are um, rejecting it, then it's going to go through these processes in pain, in discomfort, because it has to happen. It's a natural part of life. And so- Hi there. Welcome to the Align Living Podcast. I'm your host, Kathleen Galatly, and I'm super excited to have you join us. In these episodes, we're going to have some heart-to-heart conversations with experts, everyday wellness enthusiasts, and, well, anyone with a story to share about their journey towards a more balanced and harmonious life. Welcome to the Aligned Living Podcast, where well-being meets wisdom, and the journey is just as important as the destination. Let's dive in. Hello everyone and welcome to the Aligned Living Podcast. I'm your host Kathleen Galatvi and I am ecstatic about episode 20. We are going into the 20s um, which sure it's been a journey and I'm excited to share this particular podcast with this particular guest because she has been so important in this journey, such a big part of this journey. And um, with, with, with what's the saying, with further ado, um, I have the amazing Josie Thorne here with me today. Josie, um, yeah, is just a, has a wealth of knowledge, the most insane skill set, is one of the most gorgeous humans I've ever met. We literally met and we clicked and she's like a sister to me now um Josie joined the line living team in 2023 June um and yeah since then it has been onwards and upwards and we're not going to get into all of that today I think I'll just have to do a little uh a little chat on my own to tell you guys a little bit more about everything going on um but yeah welcome to episode 20 if you're watching this thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel if you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, wherever you are. Thanks for listening. I hope that you stick with us throughout the whole episode and um, it's going to be jam-packed. So let's get going. Josie, thank you so much for being here, babes. It's like, we actually, to be transparent, guys, we have recorded this episode before and it was a disaster. It was like internet breaking up and down. I don't even know what all went wrong. But we just decided, nope, let's just scratch that and we're going to do a new one, a fresh one. And I'm so glad we did because even though it was only a couple months ago, I feel like you have shifted so much. You were still in Germany when we recorded that episode. You're now back in South Africa um, and gone through, I know, a lot of deep process work in the last couple months. So obviously Mm. divine timing as it always is. I'm excited to have this version of you here today. And as we always do, I think let's just start with start with the beginning is introducing yourself and telling <coughs> us a little bit about who you are, where you're from. Yeah, the, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Kath. I'm super excited to be here. Thank you for having me. And hello to all of our listeners. Thank you for being here. So yeah, my name is Josie Thorne. I am from Cape Town, South Africa, born and bred, grew up under the beautiful Table Mountain, um, literally just being a little fairy child playing in the garden, naked all the time in the sunshine, and really just um, having those uh, ideals uh, imprinted into me from an early age that living a life closely aligned with nature is the best way to grow up and I'm just very grateful to my parents and everything that they were able to provide me and show me and just yeah constantly taking us hiking and playing outside and you know just living a life as close to nature as possible um and yeah I 
my I have a few hats that I like to wear professionally. Um, one of them being, as Kath said, I am her little graphic design fairy and creative little helper elf um, for the Lion Living business. And then the other professional hat that I like to wear is a womb healer and red tent women's circle facilitator, which is work that I got into at the beginning of the pandemic in 2020. And yeah, it's been such a powerful journey over the last four years, deepening into myself um, and getting familiar with my feminine body on that deeper level. I I guess you can also say my spiritual awakening journey kind of kickstarted around 2019 um, through uh, my yoga journey was such a huge part of this this awakening within me, within my mind, body and soul and the alignment that comes from when we practice asana and meditation and breath work. Um, and then yeah, also was catalyzed by some really powerful plant medicine journeys and yeah here I am today um so much so much has happened since then um and I'm sure we're gonna get into it but honestly I'm just sitting here like so fucking grateful for the woman I am today and for all of the pain and trauma and disassociation of my past that has led me to profound embodiment profound connection profound realization in my presence and yeah I think that's just such a huge testament to my healing journey that I can show gratitude for that for that darkness because it's only led me to my light mm. 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 thanks babes I I think take us back to 2019 um you know who who was the Josie who initially found the yoga and how did that even happen you know where were you pre pre that awakening um and and what led you to to the practices that were then your your new tools sure um i i was a very anxious child a very anxious teenager i spent a lot of my time stuck in my head overthinking worrying about what the other people were thinking of me i was very energetically sensitive a highly sensitive person from a very young age and I mean as we all know this world isn't really built for sensitive people and um and so I think it was quite jarring for me to grow up in a in in this world being a highly sensitive person and not really understanding myself from this lens until much much later on you know um and so I was, yeah, 2019 was a really, really hard year for me. I was very depressed, very anxious. Um, and I kind of see this also as a culmination of the fact that I had been on the contraceptive pill for seven years and I hadn't had a natural bleed in seven years. And so what, how I see it is that we have this apana flow which is the yogic term for downward flow of energy in the body. And um, and so what happens with us as women with our menstrual cycle, this downward flow is catalyzed through the menstrual cycle and through our excretion and all these processes that happen from top to bottom that flow. And so not being able to bleed meant that you know the lower half of my body was completely stagnant and so there was no way for the energy to go out and so the only way was for the energy to go back up and this is kind of how I see this culmination of overthinking over anxiety depression like so much headiness so much um over activation in the upper chakras that there was no way for the lower chakras to balance that out and ground that energy down into the earth and into the lower half of the body and so this is kind of how I see um you know these symptoms manifesting in myself and so in 2019 in April I did a five gram mushroom journey that was deeply transformative deeply profound deeply healing it was yeah one of the most beautiful experiences of my entire life and then um the journey itself was so beautiful and very pleasant 
but then afterwards things slowly started to unravel as the nature of these really powerful ego deaths start to happen you know I see mushrooms as the sacred composters and they I kind of see them as bringing all the the shit that's sitting at the bottom to the surface so that it can be utilized and catalyzed and um really just noticed and, and brought awareness into that space and so yeah a few a few months later i had a health crisis when i went to the gynae and she said oh sorry babe you have a five by five centimeter cyst on your ovary and i was like what are you even saying to me and she was like nope we need to operate in one month's time and i was just honestly mind blown i had no idea where it came from i was generally healthy i was sporty i was active um you know there was nothing else that was wrong with me but as we start to unravel there were so many underlying symptoms that i had been ignoring because like we all are we're not trained to notice the signals and signs and messengers of our body and so this really catalyzed a huge huge awakening for me I realized that I had been so disconnected from my body from my womb space from my reproductive health what did this even mean um and so yeah I had this operation and then since then I made the decision to intentionally start reconnecting with my body I mean I'd already started that process through the yoga asana um but now it was a deeper level taking that healing to a deeper level and yeah for for six to eight months i was in this really dark night of the soul um i was having to confront childhood trauma i had pushed away for so many years i was really in that really deep dark sticky part of the healing it was not pleasant it was dirty messy shameful traumatic all the things um and yeah i came out of that dark night of the soul eight months later on the other side and as divine timing works you know things slowly started to fall into place i came off the pill um and i was presented this opportunity to do my red tent initiation which started to to give me the tools, the teachings, the frameworks, and initiate me into the great mystery and the mysteries of the womb and the mysteries of the feminine and the mysteries of um, what it means to, to have a womb and to be a woman in this world and to have that responsibility of being able to bring forth life through the power of our body and um, yeah, since then it's been a really, really powerful, enlightening like I honestly feel like any words I use are just an understatement for the the sheer magnitude of of power and reclamation and liberation that um, this journey has taken me on and with my own personal healing with the feminine and with myself and with my lineage and generational trauma you know it's so it's so broad um, and there's so many different avenues we can touch on in this conversation, you know, also related mm. to sister wound healing and our relationship to women as each other, you know. Um, and yeah, it's just been one step of liberation after the other back and back in deeper connection with my true self. I, I would love to, you know, with you saying that we can go so much deeper in, into all these things, there's there's actually two things that I'd love um, for you to share a little more on. You said, you say, you know, when you started going through this process, you were thinking of, um, you know, reproduction health, like what even is reproduction health? And I'd love for you to share now with, you know, all the work that you've done. Um, I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of women listening to this who might never have really thought of their reproductive health, you know, as an actual mm. thing, as an actual term, as mm. something that should be looked after. I mean, you know, if you mm. think of something like skin health, like, you know, everyone's like looking after the skin and putting the sunblock on or whatever, like gut mm. health gets so much attention, yeah. like, you know, yeah. like what is, what is reproductive health? What is reproductive health to you? Mm. Yeah. Wow such an interesting conversation and not one that we're often brought to our attention but attention but one that is so profound and so important um 
you know, we are, we're conditioned to only think about our reproductive health when and if we want a baby. But mm -hmm. actually, the reproductive health is the foundation for your entire body's health, you know, um, balanced hormones are not just important for the menstrual cycle and for having a, a sustainable pregnancy, but they are, you know, hormonal health is mental health. And so mm -hmm. reproductive health to me is the understanding that as a woman, our fertility is a sign of our vitality. It is a sign of our optimal health. And so um when we are in most optimal alignment that's when our body is in most optimal health to produce a baby but we shouldn't only be thinking about these things when we want to have a baby there's so much um preparation and you know uh, uh, uh aspects of life we have to think about you know um a huge one that many people don't know about is the fact that all these fragrances and perfumes and artificial scents in our household products, in our cosmetics, in our makeup, in our perfumes, these are endocrine disrupting chemicals, which means that they disrupt the natural production and flow of hormones um, around our body. And so it's really about trying to live a as low toxic lifestyle as possible. It's about putting, you know, our body first and saying, is this really necessary? Am I going to be putting strain on my body by putting these chemicals, these creams, these whatever it is in your environment um, that's going to put strain and impact on your body? And because slowly one after the other, they just build up and build up and build up. And this is how hormonal imbalance happens. This is how, um, you know, all these different things that women deal with, cysts. Um, ovarian cancers, uh, cervical cancers, uh, PCOS is a really huge one. Endometriosis is a really huge one. Um, irregular cycles, missing periods, painful periods, you know, all these different um, symptoms of uh, feminine um, of feminine reproductive health are really just, they all come down to the root cause of women not being educated around the structural processes of the body and how hormones work and how the ovaries function and how the ovaries talk to the womb, which talks to the brain, which talks to the heart, which talks to the gut, which talks to the immune system. You know, all of these processes are so deeply linked. And one of my biggest passions is you know, forget the spiritual, let's just focus on the educational, the science, you know, so much educational science has been, I want to say, I don't want to say purposely left out, but like, you know, we don't really know what the greater agendas are running around disempowering women, around understanding their body. And so, you know, all of these basic understandings that I teach women, my clients and my programs, it's education that we really should have been taught at school. And the understandings of how the menstrual cycle works, how the hormones interact with each other. You know, we, we need these hormones, not just for ovulation, not just for reproductive health, but also, like I said, for mental health. It's a huge, huge aspect of having healthy hormones. Um, really, it creates who you are on a daily basis. Your hormones are really the foundations of how you feel, how you react, how you present yourself in the world, how you show up um, and in social situations, etc. So it's they really are like the building blocks of who we are on a daily basis and taking time to understand the, these, pro, these fundamental processes of the body is really going to deepen your sense of self so much further. Mm, thank you so much there's there's so much in there that is just like mm. wow like it is not it's not spoken about enough and you know mm. when you when you said the words our our like our, our our optimal health will be our optimal fertility yes. and I think you know when I heard that I, I immediately thought of 
you know, how many women do struggle um, with fertility, do struggle to get pregnant. Mm. Um, mm. And I'm no expert in this, but I, I know so often women end up feeling like it's like it's their fault or there's something yes. wrong with them or it's their womb or their ovaries <sighs> fault or, you know, like it's it's the woman part of its fault. And I think it's so important to realize that where you are today is the buildup, is the manifestation of everything that you've done in your life all the chemicals potentially disruptors that you've either ingested or had on your skin or had in the air or drank in your water. Yeah. That's the physical. It is all the energetics from your whole life. It is all the stored emotions and trauma that's still in your body. It is pre-birth. It is DNA. It is mm, epigenetics. Mm. We can, again, we can like, we can bar the, the spiritual for now, but you know, like you mm, can go right mm. into where you are right now and I think just knowing that is so freeing to to know like it's it's not just like oh my ovaries aren't working so that's the reason why I can't have a baby and did it like there's a lot of things that have happened and for just as it is that for the for the reproductive organs to heal and to balance for the hormones to me I go straight to but what's going on in your nervous system Mm, and what's mm. going on in your digestive system and your lymphatic system and how are those mm. systems supporting the health of the reproductive system if you're in flight fight freeze fawn all the time your body's unable to go into heal and repair mode mm-hmm. so just like a lot to you know when you said that just like a lot to think about that it's often you know i i find often that people want to live up to like, I'm good enough if I'm like, when I'm healthy, like I know Mm -hmm. this is, and I'm speaking out of experience where I, I've gone through phases where I'm like, I'm doing everything right. I'm doing yoga. I'm doing breath work. I'm eating healthy. I'm doing this and I'm sick, but I'm tired Mm -hmm. and I've still got Mm -hmm. anxiety, but I'm doing all the things like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? How can I, Mm -hmm. and And you have to pause and go, if you're only starting to do your healing work now, you're unraveling your entire life of packing on things, of holding on things, of storing things. And Mm -hmm. it really only is ultimately actually for me through doing the spiritual work Mm -hmm. that the physical started to make the changes because you can eat the salad with a grimace on your face and your body is not going to absorb those nutrients Mm -hmm. in the way that it would be if it was actually welcomed and Mm. like embraced and you just like you know so um I really love that you said share that thank you and I and I think the you know message that I really want to send to any women who are listening to this who might be struggling with these kinds of things any I mean there's a large array of, of of issues that women face around this is find people who know more about it than you do it's Mm. and it's not just a medical doctor like a medical doctor is one resource that's one resource is a medical doctor right then there are so many other things um Mm. so yeah please anyone who is listening to this if you're unsure if you don't know anyone if you don't know where you could find these kinds of people women um please I'm gonna just say it now I'll say it at the end of the podcast as well but reach out to Josie or reach out to yeah, myself and we would please. happily connect you with hormone experts and womb healing and all these things and actually on that note I'll use that as a segue um red taints I feel like there mm. are a lot of women who are going to be listening to this who do not know what the red taint is um, I would love for you to share a little bit about maybe a bit of the history of it, how you found it, how was your mm. first red taint experience? I know mine was quite intense. It was at Spirit Fest, I think like 2018 or something. And I took my mom and my sister into the red taint. Within two minutes, my sister left and she was like, nah, <laughs> not doing this. Within like 10 minutes, my mom left and she was like, no. This is too much for me. 
I I was like, but I'm like quite an extremist. So I'm like, let me see how uncomfortable I can be. Like, let yeah. me see how this goes. So I'd love to hear from you a little more about, about how the red tents, I know you have the black tents as well, but let's sp speak about red tents today um, and a little more about that. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I also just want to take a moment to what you mentioned before and just, yeah, mm. any woman who is dealing with fertility issues, like, please know that you are not broken. You are not broken and that there are practitioners and facilitators out there that can help you um and that honestly the biggest mistake i see women making when it comes to their reproductive health is consulting doctors gynees obgyns before consulting spiritual healers practitioners hormone specialists womb healers and yeah because the spiritual and the physical are so interlinked and like you said i think it's really it's it's so important to do the healing on both levels and i've actually found on my journey i've actually healed so much faster when i've worked with the energetic because then that has like a ripple effect and goes down the line down the line and impacts the physical um so yeah i just wanted to to say that quickly um and then yeah so red tent is an organization that's not owned by anyone um but it is a global phenomenon and anyone can adopt its principles and values um red tent is based on the history that when we as humans lived in tribes and communities all women would be synced up to the same menstrual cycle because we didn't have artificial lights pollution and electricity which disrupts hormonal production and affects the pineal gland um so all women would be bleeding on the new moon in the dark moon and then ovulating together on the full moon and so when women um would have their first bleed which is known as menarche the first bleed of the girl who's becoming the woman um she would be brought into the red tent and it would be this beautiful space of elders and wise women and mothers and maidens and a gathering of women where women could just be women and they could share and they could grieve and they could love and they could cry and they could really just share the wisdom it would be this beautiful cross-pollination of wisdom from the elder generations down the generations and so young women would come into their feminine power into their womanhood with being really held, being really safe, being really protected and also initiated into the importance of the feminine mysteries, into, like I said earlier, the deep, deep responsibility that women hold by being the sacred life keepers, the birth keepers of this world, you know? And that is a really, really deep responsibility that we as women hold. And it also comes with a lot of power. And so women would be initiated into this power. They would also be sexually initiated into their womb power. And so women would come into their power in a way that was um, held by the elders and guarded and sacred and holy. And there would be these rites and initiations and really um yeah passages of 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 journeying through one's one's lifetime that would always be honored by the circle of women of your community and you would be held and um yeah just such a powerful way of coming into your adulthood you know um and so red tent in the modern world is about reviving these ancient mysteries is about reviving the sacred holy process that it is to bleed that it is to give birth that it is to go through menopause you know all these different life cycles that we as women um journey through and it's really about um reminding women that 
you don't need to do it alone because you have a community of women around you, holding you, keeping you safe, reminding you of your power, even when you yourself may have forgotten it, you know, may have strayed on your journey. Take a breather and explore the Aligned Living On Demand video library, along with our exclusive membership perks. Plus, our YouTube channel is already up and running, offering even more wellness content. Your path to holistic living is just one click away. Visit our website to learn more. And now, let's return to our inspiring discussion. And so Red Tent in the modern world is a revival of these very ancient um, practices and understandings of the sacredness of our tears, our sweat, our blood, our juices, and how can we show reverence for these processes and deeply honor the body as well as the soul as we as we transition through our life cycles as women. Mm. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. I feel like I learned a thing or two from all of that as well now. Um, it's It's epic. It's epic stuff. And it surprises me how uncomfortable those concepts make modern mm. women feel. Mm. Um, mm. We're so we're so drawn apart from it. I mean, you know, you brought in a little bit about sisterhood earlier, and how I really and I, I mean, I have a twin sister, but I really feel like I only stepped into the, the understanding of what sisterhood is in 2020 when I went mm. to my first women's retreat and I mean I have a lot mm -hmm. of good girlfriends I have women who I've been friends with since I was very young um, and we're great friends but it's a it's a different energy there's a different layer of um of integrity and respect and um like this oh, there's one word that I want to use but it's not coming to me but just like this there's a different essence to it. Um, mm. And so I think, you know, if there's fear around these things now, even if you're listening to this, let alone like stepping into a red tent, if there is anxiety and fear that's coming up in your body when you hear this and you think, oh my goodness. Well, this is, for, for example, um, when I left high school and I was going to go to university, my sister went to raise. She was in a building with, I don't know, 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 women, whatever the case might be. And I literally said to my parents, if you put me in a building with 300 other chicks, then you will never hear from me again. I'm not <laughs> going to go live in a building with 300 other chicks. That sounds like a nightmare to me. And it's so interesting because fast forward now, over a decade later, if I could go and stay <laughs> in a little compound with like 300 of my women, I would be like, <laughs> fuck yes, that sounds dreamy. Like that sounds amazing. And not to say obviously that, that, that women don't come with their drama. I think we just do. Um, but really just, just if you have that anxiety and that fear around connecting with other women, I, it's almost like a bit of a mirror of what part of yourself, what part of your own womanhood, feminine energy, are you struggling to connect with mm. and to see and mm. to feel and to be in? Um, and so I guess my, my next question would be, um, what would your three, what would, what would three pieces of advice be that you would give a woman who is just starting out on this journey has maybe just heard about red tent for the first time has maybe just heard that that some perfumes and lotions and things are affecting her hormones that has maybe just heard about the concept of you know a real global sisterhood for the first time what would your advice be to that woman where do you get started what are maybe some small practical things you can do and yeah i'd, I'd love to hear kind of three three little pieces of advice from you well, I really firstly would love to challenge women to look at the relationship that they have first and foremost with their body. Um, 
our bodies are an extension of earth and everything in nature is perfect. Therefore, your body is perfect. And so if you are having these disconnections from your body, which is this divine gift from God, from the universe, you know, that is going to disconnect you from being in touch with your feminine body. And then I want to take that one step further and say, what is your relationship with your menstrual cycle? And really, it can be brought down to this fundamental understanding that if you hate your menstrual cycle, if you disregard it, if you just shove a tampon up there and get along with your day, like, of course, you're going to be experiencing pain. Of course, you're going to be experiencing discomfort. Of course, you're going to be experiencing uh, challenges around your menstrual cycle, because on a deep fundamental level, your body, which has to have these processes, just like urination, just like going to the bathroom, um, all these things, if your body feels that you are um, rejecting it, then it's going to go through these processes in pain, in discomfort, because it has to happen. It's a natural part of life. And so I really want to challenge the women out there journal on your relationship with your menstrual cycle what are your feelings towards it where did this come from what did you learn about your menstrual cycle and then also take it one step further and look and try to remember back to what was your first bleed like were you held were you loved were you supported were you encouraged or were you told to just here's a pad here's a tampon there's the bathroom go get on with it you know, keep yourself to yourself. Don't talk about it, you know, because there's a, we grow up and unfortunately this is just the, the, the reality of the matter is growing up in a patriarchal society that values the masculine tendencies and devalues the feminine tendencies means that we grew up as young girls with a lot of shame around our menstrual cycle. And so this shame is the generational trauma. It is the the burden that we take on as women being alive in this patriarchal paradigm. And so really the first step that you can start to do to, to heal your relationship with your feminine energy and to come into deeper intimacy with yourself and with your body is to, to go on this journey of what is my relationship with my menstrual cycle and how can I be more honoring of this process, this beautiful, sacred holy process and what does that mean to me and yeah really just starting to live a more cyclical life starting to you know slow down and take rest when you bleed and um and then honoring your seasons of energy during ovulation and the follicular phase I know you had Ella on the podcast and I'm sure she spoke a lot about the cyclical living and how deeply important this is for us as women to honor the phases that we go through and flow through during our menstrual cycle. So yeah, that would be my first tip because that's quite a personal and deep journey for every woman to go on. And then secondly, I really encourage women to, to go into women's circles and sit with other women in circle and to really be open-minded, be open-hearted and try not to judge yourself and judge others um, through that process because the most beautiful part I think about being vulnerable is the opportunity to be seen and the opportunity to be witnessed in your pain and through that process you give permission to other people that it is okay to be vulnerable it is okay to be weak it is okay to not know what's going on it is okay to be confused and lost and traumatized and hurt and you know all these things um that we we struggle with and it's it's so it's so deeply transformative when we can allow ourselves to be witnessed in our pain and you know, just through sharing that, you know, through through speaking it out loud and telling our story from a place of empowerment rather than victimization can help for so much alchemy and transformation to take place within our own relationship to our suffering and to um, everything that we've gone through. 
And really through that process, we can start to develop deeper trust in other women because in these circles, this is this is what it's all about. It's about women supporting women, women empowering women. And so when you can open yourself up in a space like that, that has a, a sacred container, you know, it's led by a facilitator that knows what they're doing, that is trauma informed, that can hold space in a respectful way, you're going to be able to transform lifetimes if not generations of patriarchal wounds against the feminine sisterhood wounds but wounds of betrayal wounds of um mistrust and all these different things that we as women have through epigenetics through gen generational trauma have taken on you know from as as far back as like the 14th century during the inquisition during the witch trials you know all of this these problems are not new. They have just been put onto one generation after the other. And that's where cycle breakers like you and me come, come in play where we're like, we literally cannot live any longer until we take it upon ourselves to heal this, you know? Like we, we are so sensitive that we feel it so deeply. And that's why we've gone down this path of becoming um, embody facilitators in our various disciplines because we know that there is another way to live and we know that there is so much power in confronting the shadow and confronting the darkness and the power that exists within within those dark spaces because really womb work is shadow work mm -hmm. and it's about looking at all these different places generationally and personally that we have suppressed our power given away our power um and how can we reclaim that through owning our own reality through owning our emotions through processing through asking for help through just being open to the fact that there is another way mm. um i don't know if that was three <laughs> i mean i'm just like it's like you say something and i'm like that is that is my favorite part of this episode. And then you just say something else. And I'm like, no, that is my favorite part of this episode. Sure, <laughs> um, Josie, thank you so much. That's, you know, when you ask the question to go back a little bit, um, you know, when was your first menstruation? I don't remember mine at all. As in, it is completely blocked out. Psychologically, I have put that in a little box somewhere in the back of my brain. Mm -hmm. And I do not remember at all. Um, mm. so, you know, the, and that's work that, that, that I've been doing on my own. And I know for a lot of, a lot of women, there is that disassociation from it. Mm. Um, mm. and mm. you know, when I, when I s spoke about how doing the, the spiritual work is really where I started really feeling like the healing and things happening, mm. I think mm. for me, a very big, a very big part of my healing definitely includes me starting to familiarize and it, it can start really on a physical level familiarizing myself with my menstrual cycle starting to learn a little bit more but what does that mean what hormones are being released looking into that oh how does that influence my mood how's that influencing mm -hmm. my energy how's that influencing my mm -hmm. emotions oh wait now we're looking into our thoughts which create our belief systems which create our mm -hmm. actions how am I acting what am I doing um and again just bringing it back over and over again how everything is connected you cannot yeah, so... isolate a part of yourself on any level yeah yeah it's you just you you just can't um exactly and, you know, I, just, I loved absolutely everything that you just said um I feel like you've given like a mini workshop today actually yeah. <laughs> and like I should have been taking notes um I hope those of you who are listening to this or watching this are taking notes but <laughs> I'm gonna yeah so from there I'm actually going to ask you to just introduce sync and flow to us because you know how did you was it a download was it how did that kind of happen that sync and flow was born um and what I would love to hear what your first ever offering was um and how it's grown and you can kind of bring us up to the present day and, and what's happening um with that now because as as entrepreneurs and those who are listening as entrepreneurs I don't think it really matters really what your business is your business 
really is an extension of 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 your own journey. It's a reflection mm. of your own journey. Josie and I are in a in a massive. Um, I'm gonna call it a battle. It's not a battle, but Josie <laughs> sent me like a Josie sent me like a six minute long voice note <laughs> yesterday, and she just like lay down the law, and she's like, Kathleen, you're gonna sit down every day, and you're gonna do that deep dark damn soul searching stuff because the business needs you to do this right now like the time is now like you 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 did your course with the ee course last year you've been going along fine but like now it's time to like dig into your level up like, you yes. know and um it's uh, watching you grow i haven't even known you for a year yet and watching your expansion and growth and the expansion and growth of of sink and flow has been so inspiring because it has been directly in line and this direct manifestation and at the same time reflection of your personal growth so yeah. i'd love for you to share a little bit about how it started what your first offering was and then lead us kind of up to today Oh, thank you so much um, for that invitation. Actually, in my human design line, I'm a two four, and the four is all about your community is where everything comes from. You know, your 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 prosperity is in your community and in sharing about your with your network or your net worth is in your network. Is what someone said to me. Anyway, um, yeah. So sync and flow for those that don't know, sync with a Y. So it's really about sinking back in with your feminine flow whether that be you know your menstrual cycle or your juices or your emotions or your hormones or whatever you want to apply that to really just sinking back in with your authentic feminine essence is what it comes down to and um yeah this journey this uh sorry my business was born at the end of 2020 after I'd gone on this really deep dive with my own personal healing with my menstrual cycle with my womb um after completing my red tent initiation which was like a nine month deep dive into my own personal healing journey and yeah this this work has has seriously changed my life it has Honestly, I don't know who the woman I would be today without it. And so I realized how fundamental this healing and this education is. And so that's why Sink and Flow was born. I wanted to bring this information and make it mainstream and bring it to as many women as possible and ready to awaken the the feminine power within every woman and remind them of their connection to their inherent divinity through the power of the womb. Um, so yeah, it started in, in September 2020. And I think it was October 2020. I held my first ever women's circle here in Cape Town. And it was, I think about 11 women came and it was so fun. And we just did some candle magic and shared and connected and sing and sang and danced and yeah we danced at the end of every woman's circle and it's just so fun you know really I see the woman stepping into these spaces coming in as one person and leaving a completely different person and it's just so crazy what you know two hours two and a half hours of authentic deep emotional and um, vulnerable connection between sisters can do on a person's energy and their nervous system and yeah so that's that's one of my core offerings it's my most accessible offering i have my next woman's circle for women in cape town and the greater surrounding area on the 15th of february next week thursday in one week time um and yeah if you would like to come to that please get in contact with me via my instagram all my links will be in the show notes below i know that because i edit these podcasts <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, yeah please get in contact with me if you would like to come and experience the magic of women's circles they really are such a transformative space and yeah you can really 
creates so much change and momentum in your life from just showing up. And I really say like showing up is 80% of the work, showing up with an open heart, open mind, you've already done 80% of the work. And then the rest is all you have to do is just be there. And I'm there to guide us. We do meditations, we do embodiment practices, we dance, we share, we sing. I also speak a lot around um, the feminine biology and kind of bring in the spiritual and the scientific in this beautiful way that I weave it together to kind of give you a grounded but also magical understanding of your beautiful, beautiful body. Um, and yeah, since, since, since 2020, my business has grown and evolved, like you said, as I have. Um, I now have, I'm currently also in a business incubator working on my foundational um, offering, which I'm hoping to bring to the world very, very soon. Um, as I spoke, my passion really is in period healing, womb healing, menstrual cycle healing, and then, you know, all of the cascading beautiful effects that that um, comes into with self-confidence and sexual empowerment and self-liberation and speaking your truths. And, you know, there's such a, a multitude of, positive effects that happen when we start to heal this this deep center within our body our womb space um so yeah i would love for every woman that's listening who's able to attend my woman's circle to be there it's really um yeah it's it's such a life-changing experience and if you message me and tell me you came to me through this podcast I will offer you a sneaky discount to the tickets so just tell me that you did and yeah I'll be happy to offer that to any listener who would like to come through amazing and and as you have been such a support and expander and inspiration and right hand and emotional support friend and all those things for me <laughs> as an entrepreneur running my business and growing my business one of your other businesses which is sync and flow marketing I would love for you to speak a little to that as well because I know how passionate you are about helping women, female entrepreneurs grow their business. I feel like, I feel like if I like something happened to me tomorrow, like Jersey could just take over aligned living and <laughs> it would actually like still be like, okay, <laughs> like maybe they'd miss me a little bit, but like the way in which you work is just so, um, you're so invested on such a deep level um and that is just it's very very rare so just a little bit about I don't know if you're taking on any clients at the moment because I know you are at quite full capacity but if there was anyone interested what what is the offer and and what would the steps be to maybe get in touch with you yeah so I have sink and flow which is like my healing business my baby um, I also forgot to mention, I also do one-to-one -one coaching, if that's something that anyone would like to just dive deeper uh, with me on. And then I have, used to be Josie Thorne Designs, now is Sync and Flow Marketing. Um, and this is really a culmination of my two passions, the, the healing consciousness evolving work, and then also the power of creativity and the power of, um, you know, creative, creative ideas and how we bring them to the world and how we birth them through the world to the world, which is also another connection to the sacral chakra, the womb space and how we're able to birth ideas and birth projects through the world. Um, so that's like a, just another like beautiful weaving of these these sacral chakra energies. Um, so yeah, I'm really passionate about supporting female entrepreneurs within the holistic wellness industry, like Kath, like Aligned Living, who are who have a greater mission to help the world and to help um, yeah the healing and revolutionary um, paradigm that we're now stepping into in this world and to bring forth that new earth. I support women with graphic design, content creation, um, 
really on a I see myself as a visual translator and so because I have this beautiful I have a background BA in visual communications and then I have this beautiful understanding of the spiritual side that comes with these kind of businesses and so I really am able to weave them so beautifully and really just make sure that the the aesthetics and the brand image and the brand identity that my clients are presenting themselves on social media, on their websites, you know, in any form of communication is reflective of the deep authenticity, the deep integrity, the deep codes that they're bringing in their work. And so I'm able to really support them and make sure that, you know, the quality of their communication and their marketing is matching the quality of the healing and the work and the offerings and the coaching that they are bringing to their clients so that they can be this beautiful harmony and that the world really takes them seriously because I don't work with clients that I don't deeply believe in their offering deeply believe in their messaging and that's just what it like feels me so much deeper to do this work because it's like I know overall we're all heading in the same direction for a better world, a better humanity, you know, more love, more compassion, more understanding on this planet. And so we can all just really work towards this one common goal. And that's why, you know, I'm sure you're going to agree with me. Like this work is so much bigger than just you and I, it's so much bigger. And I literally get like goosebumps speaking about this because it's so it's like we want world peace and we're going to take any road to get there every and every any and every opportunity wow. avenue road whatever we can say to get there you know and the more we do it together the faster we're actually going to get there mm -hmm. and i think community is also a huge huge part of where we're going and everything we've been speaking about you know knowing that you don't need to do it alone knowing that there are people out there knowing like yes it's scary but like work investing in yourself hiring coaches working on your spiritual development your spiritual growth and then like you investing in working with other people who can help you take your business to that next level and you know leave more space for you as the visionary to bring forth that those that information those codes that wisdom you know um because it would be a waste of time for you to be worrying about all the things that i do that just come so naturally to me yeah. and that's part of my spiritual gift and your spiritual gifts are in everything else that you do you know with your clients and with your programs and with your yoga it's we need to be deeply honoring of each other's gifts and give each other the space to uh, and the platforms to step up and utilize our gifts in the best way possible mm, amazing and, and on that note i'm going to ask you the question that i ask everyone is what does living in aligned life mean to you hmm Ah, I love this question. Um, so for me, living an aligned life means living in connection to my menstrual cycle, living in connection to nature, honoring the different phases and waves that I go through. If I am feeling energized, I honor that. I take action. If I'm feeling introverted and vulnerable and emotional, I honor that and I stand inside and I do self-care and I have a bath. You know, it's really for me about honoring the different phases and waves and knowing that each aspect is is beautiful, is powerful, is love. And so the more I can honor my darkness and my vulnerability, the more I can make space for my lightness and my joy and my bliss and really putting myself first and really reframing what it means to be selfish, choosing myself first. Um, and knowing that the more I put myself first, the more I can actually have energy to give to others, to overflow, to share, to be in abundance and mm. to to be in alignment with my highest power, which I see as my body, I see as my womb and I see as, you know, this beautiful interconnected relationship that we have between our bodies and nature which is divine which is source which is god you know this beautiful correlation between the moon cycles and our cycles the waters the oceans 
our emotions and all these our sacred tears you know and weaving and celebrating all these different multi-dimensional aspects of what it means to be a human mm. thank you thank you thank you thank you for everything that you've shared today i they are so i feel like we need to like chop this up in like 100 like <laughs> reels or something and use all of it because it was honestly so much valuable and just such authentic um shares from you today Josie thank you so 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 much um we could go on forever but we will not. <laughs> we really could we will so, do a so part two um, we actually just need to line up like the last 20 guests and just book in the next like 20 part twos because that's how all these conversations go we like get into them and then it's just like wow like you said we can pick one of the things we've spoken about and make another three podcasts about that because it is yeah, so much literally but you really i feel like you 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 yeah you gave us so much today and really grateful for your time for your love for your light for your energy um personally i'm just always beyond grateful for you um and i'm sure that everyone listening to this you i mean if if you found absolutely nothing useful listening to this podcast please send me a dm <laughs> <laughs> send me a dm i would love Challenge. to meet you <laughs> um josie just quickly i know it's going to be in the show notes but while while everyone's still listening what's the easiest way to get in touch with you uh definitely on instagram my personal handle is j-o-s-i-e underscore thorn t-h-o-r-n-e or my business instagram sync s-y-n-c underscore in underscore flow um yeah just send me a dm and i'm happy to get in contact with you mm, amazing babes thank you so 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 much thank you to everyone who has listened to this conversation or watched this conversation please leave a comment if you're here on youtube ask questions um if you don't want it in the comment section send us a dm on instagram um you can just check the show notes all the information will be in there um if you loved it as always so that we can reach more of you lovely souls like comment subscribe share um all those things yeah. really, really send this to all your girlfriends send this to all your girlfriends send this yeah. to your girlfriends yeah. Have those conversations. To your Talk sisters, to your cousins, stuff. Yeah. to your mothers, yeah. to everyone. Yeah, yeah. Totally. The reason things are taboo is because that's because there's power in them, you know? So mm. let's have these conversations. Mm. Let's talk about the weird and wonderful things and educate more women around the world around the power of their menstrual cycle and their womb space um so thank you so much for having me kath honestly i've had so much fun i love talking about this topic it's really it lights me up from the inside out it's so deeply connected to my purpose so thank you for giving me that opportunity oh, of course of course it's divine timing and yeah i mean i I need, I, I'm driving to Cape Town now, so I can just, I really know what's going to be processing in, in my brain and my body mm, for like the next few mm. hours of this conversation. Um, <laughs> so yeah, thank you, Josie. Thank you to everyone who is here and who supports this platform. Um, it's actually good for you to see these two faces together and hear these two voices because when you support a live <laughs> living, you also support us um so yeah just from from my heart to yours thank you so much and i'm looking forward to episode 21 lots of love and have a beautiful day everyone bye thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the aligned living podcast we hope you found inspiration insight and a fresh perspective on your journey towards holistic well-being if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. Remember, your feedback fuels our mission to bring you valuable content that aligns with your life. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, and feel free to reach out with your thoughts, questions, or suggestions for future episodes. We would love to hear from you. But until next time, take good care of yourself, embrace the present moment, and remember you are your own healer. Thank you for being a part of our community. Goodbye for now.